hello dear friend on the path who had crossed my path somehow on the streets or in trainings or somewhere that you came to receive this on your mail list in your on your email i am doing the experiment of recording a video and put it as it is without edition and i already failed because i recorded already seven times and i stopped recording because i was judging myself and thinking how mental was and judging myself that i was not looking at the camera and that my appearance was not good and that i was not speaking anything that was making sense and the way i was greeting you also did not make sense and, ah! so all these these voices happening and then i got to use my anger to say okay this is the shot that i will start recording and this is what you will go so here i am and the failure of the experiment is succeeding now because I will not stop speaking until I finish this and I share with you. Oh, I, I have been in wild adventures the last months and I might not have talked with you for some time or I've talked with you yesterday. But what is moving in me right now is really how to be in, in the experiential reality of the now so one question that was i was walking on the beach today and thinking while looking to the ocean is how i would describe the ocean to someone that don't know the ocean and it is the first time that i'm meeting this ocean is the first time that i'm looking and that i'm 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 stepping on the sand and that i'm feeling the this small particulars of earth moving under my feet and it's the first time that I'm listening the sounds of this huge gigantic plane of water in front of me making shh, shh, shh. and then I was reading while I was sitting on the beach today this chapter about original wisdom that is a book I'm reading and basically is this man that lived in a mountain for his whole life and he's middle age around 30 years and he is invited by this western white man to go with him to the city to meet his friends and go to the ocean and it's the first time he's going to the ocean and and in the ocean he's, he stays the five hours of the meeting with his friends in awe and in silence and he is appreciating the ocean and looking at it and, and astonished by that thing that he never saw before and then i started like wow okay i'm i'm receiving some possibility from this book from what i was with the quest i am today in the morning about how i would connect or get to know something i never met before and then in the book he starts describing for his tribe so he comes back to his village and he they have a ceremony together where this man presents to the village what he learned about the ocean and he called the great ocean and during the night he had a dream that they call the real world in their culture the dream is the real world is where they really get information and knowledge to their life and then in the real world he received and he talked with the the guardian of the ocean that is the rook lakum bakur and when he met this this guy he he starts describing the ocean to him and he transcribed this to the village and i just had tears coming through my my eyes when i was reading that because of the level of simplicity and reality that he brings into his description. And he brings that the ocean, the great ocean, is something that eats the land. 
and the, it's it's so much water so much water that you it's all that you can see and the ocean is make it makes sounds it makes sounds in your ear and it's like singing it's like that someone is singing for you to sleep and the there are animals that are bigger than elephants and there are animals that are flat and and then people are so scared because the ocean will eat the land and they are scared that the ocean will eat their land and then he says no but the land floats on the ocean and and then everyone like oh the land floats on the ocean yes because the ocean is heavy the ocean is so heavy that the land floats on the ocean and i was what touches in me in in the way that this book is opening a window in my being to perceive reality in this simplicity and in this awe of discovery as i had met for the first time the ocean and when i opened these eyes today to the ocean and meeting the ocean for the first time as this man of this village describes in the book i i started to be fed and in connection with with life and and my heart started expanding and this i'm turned on about that i'm i'm alive and i'm curious about this research because it brings in a place where war is not possible because separation is not possible when you are open to discover like the ocean but also the people that you are living with or someone you're talking on the street for the first time with this openness and this genuine authentic awe and wonder for for life and this is bringing me so much joy in my daily life to have this eye opener of curiosity for life and i yeah I'm, I'm really liquid with with this this book because it brings such possibility of building relative culture where things that became so normal to myself living in this world for people who are not it, it is super weird for example buying land there is one moment of the book also that he he says well for me it's so weird when you say i'm asking this offer of that you want to buy the piece of my land to plant rubbers for two years and then i would be rich because i don't need money and why i would sell my land this is weird for me and this is like you are asking me to sell my leg to you or it is like that you're asking me to sell my name. This would make sense to you if I would ask you to you sell your name to me and I will pay you one million dollars and you sell me your own surname, Fagundes. I'm buying your Fagundes for one million. For for me, this doesn't make any sense. And this is for this man in this village in Malaysia. So yeah this this book is really making me thinking about things i never thought before and i noticed that i talked mainly so far about this book because i'm spending almost my whole time reading it this book the last days so it's mostly what is alive right now really to to share with you mm. and which also makes me think about how to build this inner capacity of 
perceiving the way you live as a culture. Perceiving that each action or the way you buy the food or the way that you talk with people on the street or not talk with the people on the street. The way you talk about certain topics or not, it builds your own culture. And because there is so many possibilities of culture, it opens up this whole territory that is possible to invent culture yourself, to invent the culture that you want to live in. So you don't need to complain that you don't have intimacy with your partner because you become the source of creating a culture where it's not possible to not have intimacy with the person you are living with, with every day. So one of the elements of the culture that I'm creating and that I'm experimenting with is that I, I don't go to sleep without cleaning the shit with my partner, for example. And we are doing this experiment of when we have something in between that were not spoken, we speak. And this has changing the way of we relating. We, we met, I met with Leonard, who I'm relating right now in a romantic partnership after six months away. I was in New Zealand and I spent this time there and I was not with him in, in physical space. And now we are for three weeks uh, sharing physical spaces together again. And this is one of the agreements we, we are experimenting with and creating this culture where low drama don't get on the way of love happening. So some days ago, there was some low drama happening. And before sleeping, I was so committed. My grumbling was so committed to not put on the table and to really stick with, I'm right. Like you pissed me off the whole day. You are with this fairness in the kitchen about the, the, the food that you wash your dishes and you let your dishes for me to wash. And like all the tiny things during the day that pissed me off. And I was so attached and clinged on these things that this curiosity and openness to be in reality with him was totally shut down. And I went to bed and I was committed, this part in me, my gremlin, to just sleep and really just ignore and and really make this silent treatment, like this revenge of not speaking, not touching, withdrawing love and like shutting down. And I was with my eyes closed and I was this, in this world in myself, in this, ah, oh, I don't want to talk. And, and it took me like 80% of anger to turn and to say, it's like, okay, I want to talk with you. There's something happening. And I was so scared because I did not know what would come after that. I did not know how, where to start to share what was happening inside of me. And it takes this, this anger, takes your heart to break through the commitment of the gremlin to war, to separation, to stay on the own square and not create love. So it's, it's a fantasy world that I've been breaking through the last months also, that love is pain-free. And actually love includes all the four feelings. Love is anger, love is sadness, love is fear and love is joy. You need your heart fully open to express the four feelings completely, to be able to have free attention, to create love. And opening the heart is one of the things, one of the skills, the adult skills that can 
free up space to you to um, to be more in reality and experience this that I described about the ocean in the beginning that it is in front of our eyes all the time available the wonder and this joy of life and creation and discovery this is our some of the thoughts that is just coming up right now and i i feel scared about mm, not making sense and i'm i'm going with it i'm i'm think now it's enough for this video right now and below i wrote some recommendations some events some articles and also some videos that i've been creating in the last months to feed you to feed your people around you with new ideas inspiration distinctions and possibilities for transformation and love to happen around you and in you.